Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking into Bali 9 member Scott Rush. Rush was born in Chelmer, southwest from Brisbane. A troubled teen during year 10 he was expelled from Brisbane St. Lawrence College, an independent Catholic primary and secondary boys school located in South Brisbane due to an incident involving drugs. From the age of 15 he had been using cannabis and had used ecstasy as well as abused prescription drugs. After being expelled from St. Lawrence's College he was transferred to Morris College Roseale, a Catholic boys college located in Paddington, Brisbane, which was closed in 2008. He graduated from Marist College Roseale in 2002, having completed his senior certificate, the predecessor to the Queensland Certificate of Education. After completing high school, he became a low-level criminal and in December 2004 pleaded guilty at the Inala Magistrates Court to 16 offences, including drug possession, fraud, theft and drink driving and was given a suspended sentence. Indeed, at the time of his arrest in Bali, there was a warrant for his arrest relating to $4,796.95 stolen from an Australian bank, with the warrant remaining outstanding. Rush and his friend from high school, Michael Suzukaj, were out on the town in Fortitude Valley and at a hotel met Tan Duk Fan Nguyen, with a friend from high school having given Rush's number to Nguyen, who told the pair to meet him at the pub, with Nguyen offering the pair a free trip to Bali, Indonesia. In his trial, Rush would later state that Nguyen didn't have anyone else to come to Bali with him, and hence the trip was offered to Suzukaj and Rush. Prior to leaving for Bali with Sujul Kaj on the 8th of April 2005, he was provided with a mobile phone before departing for Sydney, New South Wales, before proceeding to Bali. However, Lee Rush, Rush's father, knew that something was up when he found out that his son had organised a trip to Bali and believed that he would commit a drug-related crime while in Bali and proceeded to contact the Australian Federal Police. Lee Rush claimed to receive assurance from the AFP that they would tell his son that he was under surveillance to dissuade him from going through with the crime before the Bali 9 departed for Indonesia. However, Scott Rush's lawyers alleged that he was never contacted. Indeed, the Australian Federal Federal Police conducted an investigation for 10 weeks, with the Indonesian authorities informed two weeks before the arrests of a Bali 9. While in Bali, Rush stayed at Hotel Aneka with Sujul Kaj, which was used by Indonesian police as a form of surveillance for both men. Nguyen allegedly introduced Rush and Sujul Kaj to Chan and Sukumaran at the Hard Rock Hotel in Bali, and Chan and Sukumaran allegedly threatened both Rush and Sujul Kaj, ordering them to carry concealed goods or their family was, would be killed. Chan had changed the original departure date of the 14th of April 2005, as he suspected that Australian and Indonesian authorities were aware of a drug smuggling operation. On the 17th of April 2005, Rush was arrested along with Suzul Kaj, Rene Lawrence and Martin Stevens at Bali's Denpasar Nugagagai International Airport with 1.3 kilograms of heroin strapped to his legs concealed underneath his clothing. They were preparing to board an Australian Airlines flight to Sydney. Andrew Chan was arrested on board the Australian Airlines Boeing 767 with three mobile phones and an Australian Airlines boarding pass to Sydney. However, no drugs were on him. News that the AFP had tipped off their Indonesian counterparts did not come to light until later in 2005. Lee Rush would tell the ABC television show Australian Story in an episode that profiled his son, I was informed at 1.30 in the morning that Scott would be spoken to and asked not to board the flight to Bali. It wasn't until mid-morning that I received a call. Mate, we could not stop him. They have let him go through and he's on his way to Bali. Under no circumstances do I condone the trafficking of drugs. I particularly dislike drugs of any nature. Always have. When I received a call from the Australian government authorities that Scott had been detained in Indonesia for attempting to export heroin, I was speechless, sickened to the gut. I felt very let down by our Australian federal police. We tried to lawfully stop our son leaving the country. It wasn't done. Indeed, at the time of Renee Lawrence's original sentencing, she accosted to Rush, It's your bloody dad's fault that we're here. 
Trial Savabali Nayib began at Badenbasar District Court on the 11th of October 2005. Rush reiterated that Chan had made threats against him and his family, stating, The threat made me very frightened, and we were forced to follow whatever they told us to do. I had no opportunity to be away and escape from the threat, as I love my family and my mother and my father. He also alleged that Chan stated, You do as I say. Don't mess around with me. I've got a gun with me and I could kill you if I wanted to. I could kill you right now. Rush also alleged that he never met Lawrence and Stevens prior to his arrest. His statements were backed up by Strzok Kaj. During his final plea in February 2006, he stated, I hope this will be a lesson for everyone, especially my people in Australia, not to believe other people that you do not know well. On the 13th of February 2006, Rush was sentenced to life in prison by the Denpasar District Court. Family friend Neil Urukart stated, We know he's guilty of it, but you know in Australia, the sentencing is totally different. All right, so he's in a different country, and I suppose by rights, you should obey the laws of the country, and you've got to accept what they say. But it's a bit harsh. On appeal of his sentence, the Bali High Court imposed the death penalty. He proceeded to weep and cry with his parents while smoking prolifically. On the 7th of May 2010, Rush was circumcised in the Mushala of Kerbakan prison by an unauthorised visitor who had no knowledge of Rush's alleged effort to convert to Islam. However, Rush would later maintain that he is Christian and underwent the circumcision for health reasons, even though he could have had the circumcision through the prison surgery. Media reports claimed that his circumcision was a manifestation of death row phenomenon and a manifestation of his anxiety. On the 10th of May 2011, a judicial review by the Indonesian Supreme Court sentenced him back to life in prison. The Australian media took a strong interest towards Rush as a white, young, Anglo-Saxon Australian. In a 2011 interview with SBS's Dateline, he alleged that this was due to racism and not enough interest was being put onto Chan and Sukumaran who were on death row. In May 2011, he planned to marry his American girlfriend, Karen Herniz but the plans fell through. In mid-2014, he planned to marry London banker Nikki Butler, who he met while she was on holiday in Bali, prior to him about to traffic the drugs back to Australia. However, Butler did not know about his trafficking plans. However, his relationship with Butler did not work out, and the pair's relationship had disintegrated by early 2015. In 2013, he was interviewed by Mike Willisey on Channel 7 Sunday night and was incredibly nervous and jittery, appearing to be under the symptom of drugs, stating, We have to get out of here. In August 2014, photographs taken by the Held Sun newspaper in January 2014 emerged of Rush utilising drugs in Kerobakan prison and doing crack cocaine. This was amidst claims that he took meth, heroin and cocaine while in jail. While in Kerbakan prison, he would indulge in late night parties involving drug taking. In February 2014, Rush moved from Kerbakan prison to Kangasam jail in Bali's east in order to clean himself up, as he was getting beaten up and received serious threats over a $5,000 drug debt that he had in Kerbakan prison. In the same month, he admitted that he wished he was dead and told the Weekend Australian newspaper, if I had my way, I would have been dead at 25. I just didn't want to be executed in front of the entire world. He also stated, I'm not going to be able to survive here. I wish I was dead. I'm trying to figure out a way to do it that's moral. It's a coward's way out, but I can't put up with this shit anymore. I don't know what my future is. I'll never get out. I'll be taken away from here in a box. He also said that he did not know what he would do on the outside and that he was a good person gone bad. In June 2014, he said that he had cleaned himself up and wanted to become an anti-drug campaigner upon his release from prison. However, a source told the Held Sun newspaper that it was common knowledge in prison that Rush was taking drugs, with the source informing the newspaper that he was always doing them, particularly meth heroin and cocaine, but he never smoked marijuana. Butler visited Rush in December 2014, stating that he was in a bad mental and physical state and that he needed to be transferred out of Kangasam. 
Denny Fong, a Bali-based psychiatrist, recommended his transfer to a local mental hospital in Bali's Bungli prison. He was eventually transferred to Bungli Narcotics Jail due to his drug addiction. In 2019, Rush pled to President Joko Widodo for clemency, but this did not come to fruition. Numerous times, most recently in December 2019, Rush has appealed for his life sentence to be slashed to 20 years or less. In his most recent plea, he told of his shame and disgust of his crime and included a letter from his parents. However, this request, which was reviewed in January 2020, was rejected. At the same time, at his most recent appeal, the head of Bungalee Prison's guidance section noted that he had made a serious effort to turn his life around and that they had conducted urine tests which showed no evidence of drug taking and that he had stopped smoking cigarettes. The head of Bungley's prison guidance section also stated that Rush had begun borrowing books about spiritualism and yoga from the prison library and had become a different person both physically and socially. In January 2020, Bishop Father Tim Harris, who liaised with Rush's parents, called on the Australian government to bring the remaining members of the Bali Nine home, noting, we have forgotten about the Bali Nine. In August 2021, the governor of Bungley Prison recommended that Rush's sentence be cut, noting that he is a changed man, who has taken part in drug rehabilitation programs and has realised his wrongdoing. The Bali Correctional Board noted that he should also be released as he was a teenager when he was arrested with immature cognition and decision-making ability. However, these pleas have not come to fruition and Rush remains behind bars serving his life sentence. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you of when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet. Have an amazing day and remember the truth is always more interesting than fiction.